They never told us the black is beautiful. <laughs> well, welcome people. Welcome to another episode of Let's Keep It Real, okay? So today's episode is going to be the launch of a beginning of a 10-week series of 10 things I wish I knew before becoming an actress. So you already know where the subscription button is. And remember to like, share, and subscribe for me now, please. So we can get the thing at and we can share this knowledge with everybody else and everybody else is trying to be an actor. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's go right into it. First one that I wish I knew is, I wish I knew it was a 20 year career. Hear me out. Let's think on that. It takes, they always say it takes 10,000 hours to be overnight success. And, and I'll elaborate on that on another, in, in another episode or another episode of this 10 week series. Cause that's a, that's, that's a deep conversation. But unless you're like one of those super lucky people that make, make it just based on your look, like you have an exotic look that everybody just loves. And then on top of that, you, you know how to act. So we're going to be focusing on what it takes to make it as an actress, as well as the real truth and taking that 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 thing that everyone always scoop under the rug about colorism in Hollywood and all that good stuff that always everyone's just look at it, <laughs> poor black people <laughs> and scooping it back under and acting like it doesn't exist. We're gonna discuss about that today. I'm speaking about this from from experience as a dark skinned girl trying to make it in LA on a whole. And it's not even LA because a lot of people limit thinking that you only go to Hollywood to make it as an actress. When there's working class actors, working actors working their butt off in Vancouver every single day. They go out for like seven auditions a week, a week, and they book. They book US roles, they book voiceover roles, cartoons. Like I book cartoons, um, what's it called? Pilot cartoons as well. They book movie of the week for hallmark feature film um what's it called with regards to deadpool x-men 50 shades of gray twilight i can go on forever all of these movies are filmed here in vancouver that a lot of people don't realize and in order to get a lot a little bit of incentive from the government they have to show the canadian government that they do host um auditions for for canadian actors so in order to get a little incentives as well as to make 30 percent on the dollar a lot of US production company comes up to Vancouver or comes up to Canada to make use of all those stuff to stretch the, the dollar a little bit more because you can pay us less and still save on 30% of the dollar because one US dollar is a dollar 30 cents Canadian dollars I think that's how it works so all of that put into the fact that it can it can be really really busy but it takes a lot of hard work and dedication I don't mean just auditioning all the time and just do some things on YouTube and think that, oh, I'm trying to be an actor. Look at me, I'm trying to act. It takes training. It takes finding your faults and defaults and your, your isms that makes you who you are and you can't really bring that in a character that needs to be serious. You can't really bring your isms and your, I, I talk with my hands a lot, but if you're doing a character that's gonna be stern and assertive and is a boss ass, then you can't really go in with talking with your hands like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. <laughs> so it takes a lot of dedication and knowing what what's your isms and how to to let them go or even use it to your advantage to bring a character to life so with regard to 20 years career you have to also realize that big examples of 20 year career biggest of all biggest she's a household name right now in the black industry on hold for everybody to Raji P. Hansen. She moved to LA at age 26 this is really surreal I keep I keep <laughs> I keep looking at that star going, is this real? Yes. You know, I've imagined it. I've imagined it and um, here it is. And I, if any babies are out there, I just want you to know that everything I do, I think about you. I'm a mom, I have a son. When I set out on this journey, I said I'll never give up because if I give up, what am I teaching my son? If I give up, what am I teaching those who look up to me? So everything I do is for a generation coming behind me because if it were not for the generation before me, I wouldn't be standing before you. I am so honored because it's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> Hollywood, you know, that, that, um, that long walk to fame is not easy. And she's now 48 
And it took her to the age of 46 to 48 to finally officially made it to a household name. And let's not, we're not talking about baby born on BET, okay? Let's 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 get that out there. <laughs> that doesn't really count. <laughs> but I don't wanna say it didn't count. It helped her career a lot. But with regards to household, household name that everybody know Cookie from Cookie Lion on Empire. Like that's just a known fact. Viola Davis. Viola Davis is another one that's been doing it since 1996. Her first role was on a feature film as a nurse it's called Substance of Fire and she made $528. And it took years of training, going to Juilliard's um, school and everything and training to become an, an amazing, amazing actress. Going down in LA for the summer and going to American Academy of Dramatic Arts for um, advanced program for actors that I had to work my ass off to audition to even get into that summer program in the first place. It was a huge intensive program. And I've learned a lot from all those teachers that have taught me tremendous, tremendous they taught me tremendous ability and helped me along the way of understanding actor, acting on a whole. And my, my, most, my favorite coach of all time was Coach Clay Banks because coach didn't give a crap. Coach just tell you like it is. A lot of people cookie cutter don't wanna hurt your feelings. Coach is like, look, Hollywood on a whole has 600,000 actors here trying to make it. 600,000 actors trying to make it. And there's five C's that you need to realize. Five C's. And he broke them down with me for me to understand. He's like, there's a clutter. Everybody come to LA trying to make it. They don't care to go to classes. They just make, They just want to walk up with makeup on and go to the gym or go to the hot spot where you think all the celebrities are and hoping that, ooh, I hope I get some, I hope, hope a, a producer sees me. When you go to LA, you realize everybody wear makeup. Everybody got a chiseled body. And even if they're in the gym, they have a full beat face. You understand? So there's, they're the clutters. And then you have the crowd. The crowd are the people that are only go to classes, you know, here and there, one or two times, trying to make it, but not really trying hard to make it at all. Not really giving it their 100, not, not even giving it um, the necessary attention that it needs to make it as an actor. Those are the crowd. Then you have the competitions. The competitions are the ones that they're always in the room. They're always going out for auditions. You finally start knowing these girls' names. I ended up being in that spot. I'm humbled to know that I've been, I've been in that spot where you just, you know all the, the, the what's it called, the 10 black girls that they're gonna call for a certain role in Vancouver. And you know them by heart. You call their names. Oh, so and so, I don't want you to call their names because I didn't even ask permission, so I'm just not gonna put them on blast like that. So you're like, oh, what's up, Mary? Okay, Julian, okay, I see you, okay, girl. We know each other by name because we're always out going for auditions. We're always there killing it and trying to make trying to make this money and trying to tell the story to the best of our abilities. Then you have the choice. The choice are the people that are always called for callbacks. You're always called, oh, it's a beautiful feel when you get into the room for callbacks, boo-boo. Because <laughs> you know out of all the girls in, in Vancouver, you are there for callback. <laughs> it's an amazing, amazing, amazing feeling. So you go in there and you, you're like, the top two people that they want to choose but in vancouver you got to look at it from a point of view of you're not only the top two they're trying to choose because they also have callbacks in toronto if it's a huge film they have callbacks in la they always try to cast out LA, la first if they don't find it in la then they go to vancouver unless it's like one of those um roles that oh we have to make the quota we have to meet the quota for canada we have to at least hire a certain percentage of Canadian actors to get the incentives from the Canadian government to film in Vancouver. So unless it's that, you know that it's okay, it's a callback for just Vancouver cast and it's about to, or just Canada cast and it's about to be lit, you're about to get this money, <laughs> you're about to tell this amazing story. Sometimes it's amazing, sometimes it's not. There is those, a choice. And then you have the cast. The cast is, you booked that role, man. You walked it, you see your phone lighting up from your agent and you're like, ha! <laughs> it's about to go down. Is that you get another audition, which is also when you gotta count your auditions is when, or you just booked a role and it's an amazing, amazing, amazing feeling. But that doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it takes booking one role out of three years of working your ass off. And this is Let's Keep It Real, welcome to the real world. Sometimes you don't book. Sometimes you spend your entire savings on going to classes and going to schools and, and doing coaching because for great auditions, you wanna be really like, it's just like the Olympics with acting. To be great, you gotta be trained by the greats. And to train by the greats, it costs at least $60 an hour. 
and you're doing that every single time you go out for an audition. And sometimes on average, you go out for an audition three times a week. So that's a lot of money. On top of that, you're doing that. You're going to classes that cost approximately $300 a month. That ish adds up real quick. You're printing your headshots, which can equivalent to like $50 for like 20 pages. And you go through them fast because you're going out for a lot of auditions, but you're not really booking any. So let's keep it real. And you got to look at, look at the circumstances that your skin is of a darker skin tone. And a lot of times Hollywood don't know what to do with that. It's called let's keep it real. Okay. Welcome. Or you try your hardest and no matter how try you, no matter how hard you try and no matter how much training you get, you have a homegirl that you just met that just came to Vancouver and booked a reoccurring role on Bates Motel with no acting training, but she has that look. Welcome to Hollywood. The only career, the only field where you can actually be a star and make millions of dollars with no training or experience. <laughs> but if that's the case, Look, I look at it from a point of view of like, you gotta love, you gotta literally love this industry to stay in it and stay in it even after all those no's. To stay in it for the love of storytelling. That's why I became an actress. Because I love storytelling. I love, I love taking words off those pages and bring it to life. I love going deep and finding out more about that character and how I can express what that character is feeling within that scene and tell that story to the best of my ability for that character. I'm that weird girl that would sit down and listen to old people talk for the whole goddamn night because there's like the old people the senior people, their stories are so fascinating and they have so much wisdom. I would literally boil a cup of tea and be like, what's good? What happened in 1956? Tell mama. I'm that weird girl. But if you feel like you can't do it and you can't do all of this, then choose another career. Because this will eat you alive. This will eat you alive. And then on top of that, there's those weird moments when you know it's a 20 year career and you tell yourself that. So that shit don't bother you no more. You're just like, oh, just being on the grind. What's good? What's next? How can I best myself? Be prepared. What's the term that, that Coach Banks always use? Opportunity meets preparation. Preparation meets opportunity. Preparation meets opportunity. If you're not prepared, my, my girl, my, my man, and that opportunity comes knocking and you look like a fool, you finally met a producer on the road and he's just like, oh, you're an actress? Let me, let me hear your monologue. And you're like, <laughs> how you an actor and don't have a monologue ready to go? It's like saying you're a singer and you don't know a one song. How you were singing, you don't know one song. You gotta have a monologue ready to go. That's what my famous coach Clay Banks said. You gotta have more than one monologue. You gotta have a monologue, a one minute monologue, a two minute monologue, a four minute monologue, and a five minute monologue. A Shakespeare monologue, a comedy monologue, and a drama monologue. Are you ready? Or are you just, just like, I'm just gonna wing it? Because that's what it actually takes to do this full time. And not go crazy. <laughs> This is the end of my tip for this week. I'll leave you with that. Preparation meets opportunity. And I'll talk to you in my next video where I go in a little bit more depth. This is just pointer one out of ten. So I'll catch you next week. And I'll talk to you more in a little bit more details about ten things I wish I knew before I become an actress. Leo out.